Okay, welcome to Kojo's Math. And today we're talking about greatest common factor, and yes, you are going to find out about what does Kojo mean today. Notice I got a new hip, nifty new little tripod behind this, so it's going to be a little bit easier. I don't have things falling like I did before, but here we go. So today, greatest common factor is usually referred to whenever you see capital letters GCF, they're talking about greatest common factor. Well, first of all, let's talk about factors are. Factors are numbers that multiply together to give you a number. So when we multiply two numbers, we're multiplying to get a product. The numbers that we multiply together to get a product, product is telling you're multiplying, are called factors. Well, if I ask you what's the largest, what's the factors of 10? The factors of 10 are 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. So the factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. And then I said, what's the largest factor of 10? It would be 10 itself. If we're only talking about the number, and we said, what's the largest factor of that number? It has to be that number. What's the smallest? 1. Okay. Now when we're comparing two numbers, and we want to know what the greatest common factor of the two are, then there's different kinds of strategies we can use to find those two, to find that greatest common factor, not those two, between the two. So the common factor are factors that they have in common, and the greatest common factor is the largest number of the factors that they have in common. So if I'm talking about 16 and 32, well, 16, the factors of 16 are 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4, and then 2, right? 2 times 8. 32 is 1 times 32, 2 times 16, 4 times 8. And what are the common factors that they have? Well, they have 8, they have 2, they have 4, they have 8, and they have 16. So the greatest common factor between the two is 16. Because 16 goes into 16, and 16 goes into 32. And that's the greatest common factor they have in common. So, now you know what the greatest common factor is. Well, if I ask you what are the factors of 24, what we just did when we did 16 and 32, we start listing in 1 times 24, 2 times 12 equals 24, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, and that's all they have until they start repeating because if we go up and we get to 8, it's 8 times 3. We get to 12, it's 12 times 2. So we don't need to do that. So those are all the factors of 24. And we would list them in order, in numerical order. 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 6, 8, 12, and 24. And then if I said, what are the factors of 32, you'd write them out. 1 times 32, 2 times 16. Uh, 4 times 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now we're starting to repeat, so we don't rewrite it. And then we go, okay, I'm going to put them in order. 4, 8, 16, and 32. If I ask you what are the common factors between them, well, 1 is a common factor, 2 is a common factor, 4 is a common factor, and 8 is a common factor, and that's it. So what's the greatest common factor between the two? 8. So the GCF would be 8. The greatest common factor between the two would be 8. Now do you get the gist of it? But sometimes the numbers are too big. What do you do if you have to find the greatest common factor of 210 and 198? And you go through, you start going through multiplication. 1 times 210, 2 times what will give me 210, which will be 105. And then you start going into all kinds of 3 times 70. But there's a whole bunch of numbers you could miss. So we use prime factorization to find the greatest common factor. Well, you take independently, you go, OK, 210. And you would use your divisibility rules here to see what numbers go into 210. You could say 10 times 21, because it ends in 0. You could say 
2 plus 1 is 3. 3 goes into it 70 times, but I'm going to do the one that's higher because it's faster. The higher numbers I can multiply together, the faster I get to my prime factorization. So I go 2 and 5. Remember what we do? We circle, and then 3 times 7, and we circle. And then I'm not going to write it in exponential form. There's a reason, because I have to compare the two prime factorizations. I'm going to read, write it in this form. Do you remember what that's called? Expanded form. Very good. So we're going to write it in expanded form. Now we're going to do 198. Well, we're going to add this up. 17, 9 plus 8 is 17 plus 1 is 18. So I know that 9 will go into it. So let's see. 9 goes into 19 two times, so 29 times. Well, that's going to be easy. Whoops. Woo. I don't circle it yet, do I? I circle it after I do 3 times 3. 29 is prime. What's a prime number? That's right, a number whose factors are only one in itself. So now I'm going to write 3 times 3 times 29. I want to know that the greatest common factor between these two numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this over here. And I'm going to say, okay, 3 times 3 times 29. Notice I lined it up if there's anything that matches the same. Because whatever they have in common is the greatest common factor. So 3 times 3, I bring down that 3. They don't have any other common prime factors in common. None. So the GCF equals 3. All right? Now, let's look at this one. I said you try it, but I need to do one more for you. Because what I didn't do is I didn't show you if they had more than one prime factor in common. So if we do 48, and we know that 4 plus 8 is 12, so 3 goes into this. And 3 goes in 16 times. I use my divisibility rule. And then this is 8, 2 times 8. 3 is prime, 2 is prime. And if you know that the prime factorization of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, you can write that. So we have 4 2's and 1 3. I'm going to write it in an expanded form. Now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do 72. Well, 8 times 9, right? And we know that 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to circle that. And 3 times 3 is 9. Now I'm going to write expanded form. And I've got to compare this prime factorization of 72 with this prime factorization of 48. So I'm going to rewrite the 72, and line it up with what they have in common. There's three twos, so I'm going to line it up with three twos and one three. But I have to write everything that's here over here. I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to say, okay, this is in common, one, two. There's a two, that's a two. <sighs> Sorry about that. Ran out of water. I got another two. Let's see how I cross them out. I'm only writing down what they have in common. Now another 2, and 1, 3. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply these to get the standard form of the number that represents the greatest common factor of these numbers. So I get 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24. So the greatest common factor is 24. I want you to stop the video and I want you to try finding the greatest common factor of 128 and 70. Stop the video, come back on, and I'll give you the solution. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. All right, that's mine. I did that again. And here's 128 and 70. You notice that 128 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2. So it would be 2 to the 7th, but I asked you to write it in expanded form. 70, you should have gotten a prime factorization of 2 times 5 times 7. When I line that up to make the comparison between the two prime factorizations, they have 1, 2 in common. So the greatest common factor is 2. That's all it is. Now don't forget, when they have more than one prime number in common, you bring it down, whatever they have in common, and then you multiply that out. Okay? 
All right. Now, when you when will you use the greatest common factor? You'll use the greatest common factor for our next section in the chapter, which is simplifying fractions. And when we have simple when we have to simplify a fraction, we have to get it to lowest terms. And to get it to lowest terms, we have to factor out the greatest common factor. That's what the greatest common factor is. Now, sometimes you'll know it mentally, but if the numbers are really large, you could either do two steps to get it simplified. You know, like if I have uh, 48 over 64. And if I have 48 over 64, just to help you understand, if you want to do prime factorization, you can. If you don't see it, you can say I'm going to divide both by 2. And I'm going to get 24 over 32. And I'm going to recognize that these two aren't in lowest terms. And 8 goes into both of them. So I get 3 fourths. I can do that. Or if the numbers are really large, I can do a quick prime factorization to find what the greatest common factor is. Because here's what you're going to be doing in the next section after we go over greatest common factor. But you've got to be able to find the greatest common factor using prime factorization. So, I want you to write two things you learned and one question. And I will see you in class. Oh, Kojo.